Let us start off by saying this. It does not mean when your wife or your husband says sorry to you. Now I want you to hear me carefully. It does not mean when they say sorry to you that they are taking accountability. I want you to understand that because a lot of people think that when my wife or my husband comes and says sorry to me, they are actually taking accountability. There is a big difference between taking accountability and also at the same time saying sorry and being remorseful about your sorry. And we're going to learn from the word today because God loves accountability. Most of you might have realized in your life, especially divorced people, you might have realized that the spouse that I was married to never at all took accountability. They never made a decision to walk in accountability. And accountability is so lethal that even on the day of judgment, the Bible says that we are going to give account for the things that we said and did in the earth realm. And people don't understand. That's why it's important to become an accountable person when you are still in the earth realm. Because when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you, there, there will be nowhere to run because God has seen your life. He's written about your life. And this is not to put fear in anybody, but it's to say that we must become people of accountability. Accountability, it means to give account. You cannot be married or date somebody that cannot give account. A lot of people are in relationships where the man can't give account and the woman can't give account. And one of the most important things that we need to give account for in marriages or in relationships is in the area of time, is in the area of money, is in the area of the relationships we have outside, goals and certain purchases that we want to do. We need to give accountability for those things. But a lot of people, they don't give account because they are not necessarily sitting there saying that, you know what, I need to become a responsible person. And this is where narcissists get, find themselves in difficulty because narcissists do not believe in walking in accountability. Matter of fact, they will switch the story so that the minute you become a person that assists them in trying to get that unaccountability spirit out, they're not going to listen to you. They're going to switch the story. So we're going to learn here and we're going to make sure that we walk in it. The first thing here is that if your husband or your wife comes and apologizes to you, I want, it, I want this to sink in. It does not mean that they are taking accountability for the cheating. It does not mean they are taking accountability for the stealing. It does not mean that they are taking accountability for the children. It does not mean that they're taking accountability for the finances of the household. A lot of people think that, you know what, if my husband comes and they say sorry to me, they are taking accountability. Don't confuse the two. You can't confuse the two. And I, I want to take a reading, Romans chapter 14, verse 2. And the media team is going to run with this. Romans chapter 14, verse 2. And if you're there, you know, type amen on the screen there so that I know that I'm walking with you. Romans chapter 14, verse verse 2 and we're going to grab a few things here now look at this it says here in romans chapter 14 verse 2 it says here for one believeth actually it's romans chapter 14 verse 12 and 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 i want you to focus this verse with me and the reason why i want you to focus this verse with me because it will build up on what I'm going to teach you. You will never learn about accountability like the way I'm going to share it today. And it says in verse 12 of Romans chapter 14. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Did you get that? I want, I want that to sink in. It says that so then every one of us shall give account of to God, to of himself to God. And I want that to, 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 to read. I'm going to read it for the third time. So then everyone, Romans 14 verse 12, of us shall give account of himself to God. You see, a lot of people don't like giving account to their spouses. When they spend money or they go out there and they do loans, they don't want to give account for those loans. When your husband goes out there and cheat, they don't want to give account for that. When your wife goes out there and cheat, 
they don't want to give account for that. When you go and recklessly spend money, you don't want to give account for that. When you go out there and you find out that they are flirting or they are busy having an external affair with somebody, people don't want to give account for that. When you go out there and you are wanting to build a business or a company, you don't want to give account to your spouse for that. And the Bible is telling us here that we must give account because God himself is going to require an account from us. So learning to become accountable is a powerful habit to have. Learning to become accountable is a great spirit to walk in. But when you become an unaccountable person, you will not even be able to give account to God. And that's why many people, they can't pray. Many people cannot pray genuine prayers to God because when God requests accountability, they can't flow in the spirit of accountability. You go out there and you service a client and when that client wants accountability, you can't give accountability. Why? Because that spirit is not in your heart. That spirit you don't have. So how then can you give accountability to your wife? How then can you give accountability to your husband? How then can you give accountability to your kids? Accountability is the one of the highest characters to walk in. And that is what the Bible says in Romans 14 verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now I want that to, to settle in because you find that it's not settling in. And I, I want to go to Matthew chapter 12 verse 36. And if you're fo following me, I want you to learn Matthew chapter 12 verse 46. And if you're there, say amen. And those of you who are watching online who have shared this stream with five or ten people, say amen. We want to be a blessing to the people that are out there in the world. Now look at this, Matthew chapter 12 verse 36. And this is what it says. It says here, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now I want you to get that they shall give account thereof on the day of judgment. Matthew 12, 36. They shall give account on the day of judgment. So let's go in it again. It says here, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof on the day of judgment concerning that idle word they spoke. So ministry, you need to look at it from that angle. God, in every way possible, the life that you are living in the earth realm, you are going to give account for that life. The, the essence that you are living in the earth realm, you are going to give an account for that life. So what stops you from giving account to your husband? What stops you from giving account to your wife? Because anybody who does not give account is running away from the truth. I remember this one lady uh, and this one guy, well, let me use a guy in this instance. She, she cheated, he cheated heavily on his wife. He was running with multiple women. He was running with multiple, you know, partners. And what happened was that the woman caught him. And when she caught him, it was time for him to give account. He was dancing here, dancing there, dancing here, dancing here. Is that what you're going to do on the day of judgment? So people who can't give account, they are not truthful. They are not honest. And they don't ever walk in the truth. And that is why the word of God becomes difficult for them. And that's why a lot of people, they are not genuine believers because they don't walk in the spirit of accountability. Jesus was accountable to the Father. Why are you struggling to become accountable to your wife or to your husband? And you know, one of the things that you need to know is that a spouse that is unaccountable is extremely defensive extremely defensive when you see a spouse that is extremely defensive they cannot go into taking account they cannot become accountable and responsible and how can you leave such person with the children how can you allow such person to run the finances of the household how can you allow such person to move why because accountability is not in them and look at what i wrote here the most basic part of accountability is giving an account it means telling or at least being willing to tell what you did or didn't do. 
You find there you are in a relationship. You are with this wonderful lady. She was given to you by God. And you misuse the trust she gives you. You misuse the opportunities she gives you. You misuse the blessing she gives you. You misuse all those things. And you find yourself walking in a mighty big struggle simply because you don't want to find yourself being accountable with your finances. Let me tell you something that's interesting about the end of the world. God is going to require for you to give account in terms of how you, you ran the church. God is going to require to give account in terms of how you treated people. God is going to require to give an account on how you raised your kids. God will want an account for you in what you did in your life here in the earth realm. We don't just live this life. That's why I always tell people, you need to go out there and become soul winners. You need to go out there and become givers in the kingdom of God. You need to become that person that serves in God's house because God is going to require accountability from you. Look at this with me. And those of you who are watching and are being blessed, say amen because we are building on this particular item. Now look at this. And I wrote here, narcissist individuals try to evade taking accountability by saying words like, I never said that, did that. Or you're making a mistake or I was only joking. You see, people when they marry you, they're serious about you. When people marry you, they want to grow with you. When people marry you, they want to develop with you. When people marry you, they want to grow to greater heights with you. But a lot of people, because they don't take accountability, they are not able to grow with their husbands or with their wives because they are always finding room to lie. A person that does not take accountability is a strong liar. A person who does not take accountability is a defrauder. A person who does not take accountability is even worse. They are even a fraudster. Now, go to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 and we're going to learn something there. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. And if you're there, say amen. And if you're being blessed by this message, say amen. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 and look at what it says and we're learning here we we got to push this word of god because we need husbands and wives that are accountable we need husbands and wives that don't go out there and make debts without telling their spouses we need husbands and wives that go out there and raise their kids in an honest and honorable way we need husbands and wives that can go out there when they are busy running around and struggling with lust they can be accountable to their spouses we need husbands and wives that can go out there and become honest and become genuine and have strong characters that are able to build formidable unpenetratable un un demonic or, or driven uh, marriages. We need spouses that are that accountable. So look at this. It says here in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. It says here, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That's talking about God. So you cannot hide anything from God. You cannot hide anything from the Almighty. You cannot, you, that's why I'm saying that when you go on the day of judgment, you're going to sit there and God's going to be asking you, why did you cheat on your husband? Why did you cheat on your wife? Why did you lie about your finances to your wife? Why did you lie about your finances to your husband? Why did you treat your husband without respect? Why did you not love your wife? Why did you not provide for your household? You are going to have to give account. And a lot of people think that, you know what? I'm going to live and just die and go just like that. It's not going to work that way. God is going to sit you down and he's going to want you to give account. So the Bible says here, everything is naked in the sight of God. Everything is naked. You cannot hide anything from God. So why waste your time trying to become smart with your husband or smart with your wife by not giving account? Look at, look at, look at something here that I want to spend time on here. Since he has made it clear that he doesn't have any intention of changing and evidenced by being unwillingness to be held accountable, you already know that it will be a waste of your time and energy to call him or her into order. Let me mention something to you. When you want people to give account, one of the things that's important is that people who can't take accountability get offended. 
Because remember, people who can't take accountability, the reason why they get offended is because they are prideful. They don't love the truth. They don't want to walk in the truth. And when they take that offense, they're going to find ways to fight with you. That's why they become defensive because they don't love the truth. So unaccountable people get offended by the truth. The truth is you went and you lied to your wife. You went and you lied to your husband. You went and you cheated on your wife. You went and you cheated on your wife. You went and you did not treat that man that God gave you so well. You went and you did not treat that wife that God gave you so well. And what happens after that is that when it's time to give account, you're not willing to run in that direction because you are taking offense in the fact that you are being confronted with the truth. And people who don't like the truth, the minute they got confronted by the truth, they will desert you, they will leave you, they will fly away from you, they will make sure that you do not ever find the, yourself in their presence. That is why that man probably left you because he doesn't like the truth. That is why that woman left you because she doesn't like the truth. And the Bible tells us that we must be people of truth, we must be honest, we must be people that are driven by the Almighty God. One of the other things I notice is that when people who don't take account, they are people who get angry. They get extremely angry. People who are offended by the truth get extremely angry. And when they're angry, they're trying to find room to make sure that they do not come to a place where they tell the truth. So they get angry and they show you this awkward behavior. They build this weird energy because they want to show you that, you know what, I don't want you to catch me out. So I'm going to get angry while I conjure up some lies in order for you not to understand that you are offending me. There are people that can be offended by falsehood. There are people that can be offended by truth. There are people that can be offended by being confronted. That is why when you are developing and growing in your life, if you are a person who does not like the truth, you will never grow and develop in your life and you'll never become a person that is always powerful because, and you'll never be a person that is used mightily by God because you are being offended by the truth and people can only grow because of the truth of the Almighty God. And that's why the Bible says Jesus, when he came on the earth, he brought grace and truth. And if you can't be established on the grounds of truth you can never be a powerful husband and you can never be a powerful wife in your life say amen somebody you know i see blessing phil is on i see colin is on i see all these people that are on say amen somebody when i share this word with you this is the truth that a lot of people don't want to accept some people, they want to hear, you know what? You're getting a Mercedes Benz next week. You know what? You're going to become an apostle. You're going to get a house next month. You're going to, no, no, no. Let's build character. Because when the world comes to an end, that house that I prophesied to you, it's going to die by vapor. Because the Bible says that the world will be met, melted by fervent heat. But a true character is a blessing in disguise. A true character is genuine. A true character is authentic. A true character is powerful. Now, let's build up on this. When you confront a person that does not take accountability, that does not like the truth and does not want to speak the truth, one of the things that happens is that they try to point the finger back at you. Because remember, unaccountable people are narcissistic in character. Unaccountable people are very skeeving in their ways. They are very mischievous in their ways. They love to see you turning the story around so that it can favor them. So that's why whenever you point the truth to them, they try to find an opportunity to point the truth back to you. They want to fight you by your statement. So they use reverse psychology to fight you as a wife. They use reverse psychology to fight you as a husband because they don't want to take accountability. And a person that does not take accountability cannot in any way walk with God. A person that does not take accountability cannot in any way stand in the presence of the Almighty God. A person who does not take accountability cannot in any way fathom the truth of God. They cannot hear God speak. They cannot walk with the Holy Spirit because a person who takes accountability is a person who is willing to grow and develop. And that's why if you're a husband that doesn't do that, you've got a problem in your hands. Now, I even wrote here and I say that a person who does not take accountability, they will say sorry to appease you, but then 
but then they're going to do it again anyways. And when they demand the forgiveness, they're not demanding forgiveness so that they can move on. No, they're demanding forgiveness so that they can manipulate you. And remember, manipulation is an art of witchcraft. Any husband that walks in manipulation is a witch. <laughs> I hope that's indeed. Any woman that walks in manipulation is a witch. Because the Bible says that he that walks in manipulation is a doing witchcraft. So why are you manipulating your husband when they are confronting you? That's because you've got an art of witchcraft in your life. And you need to get delivered from that. And you need to be made straight from that. And, and why are you manipulating your husband when he confronts you? Because you are manipulative. And in order for you to move to a place where you become truthful, you need to learn to solve things in accordance to the truth of God. And you need to learn to, be, to, to take account. Say amen, somebody that's watching. Sherry, I can see you online. Victor, I can see you online. And uh, Thomas, I can see you online. The undiluted truth of the word of God. That's what we teach in a Leon Christian church. We don't have time to beat around the bush. If you're a person that's mischievous, a liar, you know what? If you want to take on the character of the devil in your marriage, that's your business. But then you don't deserve that man. But then you don't deserve that has that wife that you've got. Because if you want to portray attributes of the kingdom of darkness in your union, it means you are not fit to be married. Let me put something out here. And, and, and I want to build on this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lerato says, Amen. That's because this message is getting to, to the right place. Let's go. Let, 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 let me show you something that, that's very important. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. And if you're with me, say Amen. Galatians chapter 2, which is in the New Testament. And God is going to bless us with a mighty word from there. Galatians chapter 2 from verse 11. We're going to read it up until verse 14. Let me tell you about confrontation today. Some of you sit down and you're like, you know what? I'm not going to confront my husband. I'm too scared. No. The problem is that you've been manipulated to think like that. If you cannot sit down and say, honey, this was wrong. My wife, this was wrong. And she sits down there and she says, you know what? You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me. You are dealing with a narcissistic person who does not want to take accountability. That's what you are dealing with. And remember, narcissism is a medical condition. Narcissism, you can be misdiagnosed by a therapist as a person who works in narcissism. That means that you raise yourself above everybody, above every object. Matter of fact, a person who works in narcissism is on the same caliber as the devil. Because the Bible says that Satan raised himself beyond God. So anytime you raise yourself above that which you're not supposed to raise yourself about, you're a narcissist. And that character is the character of the devil. I don't know if I'm being too harsh. You know, people, people can WhatsApp me after this and say, hey, you know what? This man is being too hard. I like what faith says. We need more of such. Amen. Uh, gl glory to God for that. I see... Um, and now I says, Lewis, come and join. Bless you. You know what? Let's take an opportunity to share this with more people as I build on this. Because now I'm going to talk about the characteristics of a narcissist so that you can identify one. So if there are women out there, you want another woman to get blessed, please go ahead and share this with somebody. And, and, and let's take an opportunity to share it with five people out there. Now, what's the first character of a narcissist number one they love to intimidate or blame when you go and confront a person who does not like to take accountability they're going to find a way to blame you for other stuff they're going to find a way to intimidate you they're going to find a way to make sure that what you are telling them does not come back to 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 correct them of the truth that you are trying to confront in their life so when you try to confront your spouse and they come with those essence of blaming you. So let me give you an example. I want you to give you an example. There you are. Your wife goes and opens some debts without telling you. Or your wife goes and buy a car without telling you. And then you go to her and say, you know what? We're supposed to use this money for this, this, that. And whatever, she starts to turn the situation around and say, you know what? 
But you never do one, two, three, four. You never take care of the kids. You never do that. So I want to go spend some money. on. They start to blame you instead of taking accountability. Instead of sitting down and saying, you know what? Sorry, I took the money. I wanted to do one, two, three, four. But if you're not happy about this decision, let us find ways of how we can, you know, conquer this and go back and see how we can actually make this right. That's taking accountability. But there are people that will never take accountability. They will go into defensive mode. And when they go into defensive mode, you find that a husband starts intimidating or starts blaming you. <laughs> I can see this, this is what I wanted to know. And I like what Lerato says, harsh truth, man of God. Yes, that's what we need. You can't grow without the truth. Look at this. When you start, they have, they, they find a way. And, and I want to read, I want to put this. The narcissist begins by bullying the person, endeavoring to hold them accountable. Frequently, they resort to name-calling and belittling to assert dominance over the other person. So when you go and start bringing them to a place where they must account, they will find ways to start off by bullying you. They will find ways to start off by fighting you. They will find ways to start off by belittling you. And that's how you know that you are married to a narcissist. That's how you know that you are dating a narcissist. Because they will find ways to try and make you feel small. Have you ever dated a woman or dated a man in your life? For those who are not married. And every time you wanted to bring a certain situation to their mind, they will find ways to try and make you feel small. They will find ways to try and make you feel insignificant. They will find ways to make you feel like you are not nothing and that's because you have come across a person who carries the traits of a narcissist glory to jesus say amen somebody that's watching and you need to you need to know that you can't sit down i mean there are men that i have seen in counseling sessions that god has blessed with beautiful wonderful woman that you can see she is blessed by God she's got the Holy Spirit in her she is Holy Ghost filled and that man just keeps crushing her that man just keeps destroying her that man just keeps belittling her and you find this man he is blessed by God he is he is Holy Ghost filled he is washed by the blood of Jesus he's a provider he is out there working his 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 his, his I was about to say his butt off but he's working himself off so so that he can be able to provide for the family and you find the woman just cuts him down she just belittles him she just shouts at him she just screams at him she doesn't cook for him she doesn't respect him and you realize you are dealing with a narcissist of the highest order and this is what i wrote here the second thing that you need to notice is that they love to accuse they love to take on the character of the devil who is the accuser of the brethren the devil so whenever you are willing to, they always find ways to accuse you. They cannot talk to you nicely. They cannot move with you nicely. They prefer to accuse you. Oh yeah, you remember in 2016, you did this. You remember in 2014, you did that. You remember in this particular year, you did that. They always find ways to accuse. And that's how you know that you are married to a spouse that does not take accountability because they're always trying to have points ahead of you and points that are fighting you because they do not take accountability at all. You've got that man. He went and cheated on you last year. And you went to him and said, you know what, my husband, I forgive you. You know what, my man, I forgive you and I stand with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he comes and he says, hey, you know what? I'm accusing you because you never cooked for me. You never wash my clothes. You never treat me like this, like that. You never do this. Instead of saying, you know what, my wife, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for, 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 for helping me to come back into order. You know what, honey, I, I will do better next time. You know what, I'm going to, but you are now busy trying to accuse. You are now busy trying to intimidate. You are now busy trying to fight. You don't love that person. Say amen, somebody. If you're learning today, say amen. And I wrote here that to circumvent any accountability, the narcissist preempts the attack by accusing another person. 
Why, why can't you just take accountability? Ask yourself today, why can't you just find yourself at a place where you can take accountability? Why can't you throw off that character of the devil and begin to start taking accountability? If you lied, go and be honest and tell your spouse the truth that you know what? I lied, forgive me, I'm sorry. If you are a person that doesn't treat your wife well, just go to your wife and say, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm not treating you well. Forgive me if you don't respect your husband go to him and say i'm sorry i i i i, I I'm, I'm at a place where i'm struggling to work just say forgive me for treating you without respect my husband stop trying to find points and issues and this and that to try and bring him down Go and put yourself at a place where you ask for forgiveness and take accountability and start finding ways to fix that area glory to jesus we teach the truth here. We don't like to beat around the bush. And look at this. The, one of the most powerful things about an unaccountable person is that they deny. They deny the truth. Hmm. Let, me, let, let me say this. So one way of avoiding responsibility is for the narcissist to deny they have any wrongdoing. You, you know, some people... You can see the wrong is so direct, the wrong is so visible, but they will still find ways to deny. They will deny it when you can see blue is blue, they say blue is orange. When you see orange is orange, they say orange is red. Do you know why? Because they can't take accountability. You know, people who can't take accountability don't attend church. They're always trying to give excuses. They're always trying to, how they, they, they treat the Lord's house is a reflection of how they treat their spouses. Ah, Mfundis, I'm not going to church today. Hey, Mfundis, I can't do, hey, Mfundis, I'm not coming to pray. Hey, Mfundis, I'm not coming to this. It's a clear manifestation that the way you treat your relationship with God and the way you treat the house of God is a clear reflection of who you are as a person, even as it relates to your partner. The Bible says, love yourself and lo love others as you love yourself. And if you cannot love others, it is a reflection that you don't love yourself. If you don't attend church, you don't pray, you don't give in the Lord's house, you don't participate in winning souls, you don't do any of that. It is a pure reflection of your relationship with God. Just as much as it is now, it's a pure reflection of how you are with your spouse. Glory to Jesus. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to share a few more. I'm going to share a few more to people so that they can learn. And I want you to do the same. Oh, there we go. There we go. Glory to Jesus. So, so I just shared to five more people. And, and I know people, people that log on and off, one thing I've realized is that when you're teaching something that confronts them, they have a tendency to log on and off because people run away from the truth. The Bible says in the last day, there will be people who will, who will uh, uh, want to hear their doctrines that they want. Hmm. Glory to Jesus. Say amen if you're watching. And one of the other things they like to do, they like to divert and attack they like to divert and attack they like to divert or attack now let me show you what i said i said this method begins with an outburst over something very insignificant so you come there to your let's say your wife for example and you are like to your wife you know what honey i believe that we're not supposed to do this in our lives we are supposed to go this particular direction and the statement that you are saying in a way it kind of confronts it of something wrong or something that he is doing wrong and she will come back or he will come back and say you know what i remember last week you didn't pour petrol in the car what does petrol in the car have to do with the fact that you're trying to bring the family to a place where it is stable so the issue that i have seen in my life is that the more you sit down and the more you confront the matters, the more they divert and the more they bring another attack so that you can never come to the place of the truth. Because remember, an unaccountable person does not like the truth. They do not like the truth at all. Now, I'm going to show you something very significant. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And we're going to learn here. 
In this church here, we teach the truth. We don't have time to beat around the bush. We teach the truth. John chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 8. We're going to take it from, from, verse, from verse 43. And I want you to learn. I want you to learn. I want you to absorb. I want you to carry this particular truth. Now, now look at what it says. And, and say amen when you are there. It says here, Why do you not understand my speech? Said Jesus. Even because you cannot understand, you cannot hear my word, the Bible says. Then it says here, and, and I, I want us to delve on this verse 43 a little bit. You know, it says that, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. There are people that no matter what truth you speak, they cannot hear the word of God. They cannot hear the truth of the word of God. They cannot understand the truth of the word of God. Do you know why? Because they don't like the truth. That is why sometimes some people when you confront them, they can't hear the speech. They can't hear the word you are saying to them because they don't love the truth at all. And it's very important to build a formidable marriage. You need a husband that speaks the truth and you need a wife that speaks the truth. The truth of the matter is that the Bible says it takes a woman to build a home. A home. It takes a man to build a house. But if you don't have a wife, you will not have a house, that you will not have a home that is built. You will not have a home that is built. That is what the Bible says. The Bible says that the, how the home is built by knowledge. If the woman doesn't have knowledge, how in the world can she build a home? If you as a man do not have the knowledge of God, how can you represent the father and become the priest of the house in that particular house when you don't have the knowledge of God and you don't accept the truth of the knowledge of God? Now look at this. Look at this. Look at verse 44. And we're going to build on this on verse 44. Look what it says here. Ye are of your, are, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Look at verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Look at that. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. So it's very important that people who cannot understand the truth, they cannot believe. And that is why when you come to your wife or you come to your husband and you're saying, honey, just give account. Honey, just tell me what you did. Honey, just tell me what is wrong. Honey, just tell, you find the person can't do it. You know why? Because they cannot take accountability. There are people in the workplaces, they cannot take accountability. There are people in leadership positions, they cannot take accountability. There are people in positions of power, they cannot take accountability. You are a pastor and you're running a, at the house of God, you can't take accountability. Do you know why? Because you can't embrace the truth. Now, let me show you something here. Narcissists have the ability to take a person's small fear and turn it into paranoia. There are people that walk in paranoia because they don't understand what in the world did I marry? What in the world am I dating? What in the world am I living with over here? Why? Because of the spirit of paranoia. So they will take that fear and switch it around so that you can walk in the state of paranoia. There are many women out there that I have noticed in marriage that are sitting in a state of paranoia. They don't understand what they've married. They don't know what they've married. And the same, there are some men out there, the, the, the minute you confront your spouse, she finds ways to argue, belittle. She doesn't cook anymore. She doesn't do this. She doesn't take off the household. She finds ways to try and tell you how wrong you are. She finds all those particular ways. And you know why? Because they cannot take accountability. It's very important this. Very important this. If you're learning, say amen. If you are being blessed, say amen. Maya, I see you are watching as well. Um, 
uh, uh, I see a person, Shandu is walking, uh, Faith is watching as well, Lewis is on, Kulong is on as well, God bless you as you are in the stream. Tayoshi is watching as well, Chichi is watching as well, God bless you. Guys, let's be a blessing to the world out there, share to five people or send this message to your status on WhatsApp so that people can join in the numbers and be blessed because we have too much narcissists that are out there. Now look at this. Now they, when people are being called to take accountability, they like to retreat. Now let me show you what I wrote here. This tactic is the most manipulative of the bunch. First, the narcissist rescues the other person from a dreadful situation. Having gained the other person's loyalty, the narcissist waits. Must remember, narcissists are skeeving people. Narcissists are people that will never build anything in their life at all because they're only looking to use the person that they are in a relationship with. They may even use your conjugal rights in the bedroom as a married person to try and manipulate you to get to a place where you cannot walk powerfully in confronting them in that particular area. Now notice, I'm going to take you to John chapter 5. John chapter, John chapter 6. And we, we're going to... John chapter 6, verse 60 and verse 61. And I'm going to teach you something there because we are learning. Oh, I like what Lewis says. I'm enjoying this message. God bless you. Irene, hallelujah. Amen to you too. And I like what Michael says. Lord, grant us the grace to be accountable to our partners, leadership, and the church in the name of Jesus. Look at what, what Lewis says. You are teaching good, sir. I love that. That encourages me to know that the message that I'm giving you is helping the masses out there. Now look at John chapter 6, verse 60 up until 61. And look at what it says. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Look at verse 61. When Jesus in himself, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? Imagine, Jesus speaks the truth and he disperses that truth. And they sit down and they start complaining amongst themselves. And they sit down and they say, Jesus knew in himself that they are complaining. There are some of you husbands, with the minute you tell your wife the truth, they start to murmur in their spirit. There are some of you wives, when you tell your husbands the truth, they start to murmur in their spirit. They start to murmur and complain in their minds. Why? Because they are offended in the fact that you are telling them the truth. Say amen, somebody. They are offended in the fact that you are dispersing something that can transform and change their lives. But because they don't want to take accountability, look what happened over here. Let us go to verse 62 and we're going to read it up until verse 66 and we're going to learn something here. Look at verse 62 and the Bible says here, Jesus talking says that what and if ye shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before. Verse 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth or gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Look at verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who would betray him. So Jesus knew from the beginning who it is that was going to betray him. He knew from the beginning who it is that was going to believe. Let me tell you something. There are places that your wife because of immaturity, she does not want to believe you. There are places because of the immaturity of your husband, he does not want to believe you. And what happens in your life is that you start to see the family deteriorating. You start to see the finances of the family deteriorating. You start to see the lifestyle of the family falling apart. You start to see the family going down. Why? Because they don't want to come to a place where they believe in the truth of the Almighty. Very important this. You know that your husband is misusing money in the household. 
And he's running around there spending it and squandering it on a woman. And you are getting there. You say, my husband, I, I love you. I appreciate you. You are the best man in the world. But listen to me carefully. The Bible says the honor of a man can depart from him when he starts cheating in the household. And you find him saying that, what, how, how am I cheating? Where did you see that I'm cheating? They become defensive and then they, he comes to you and he's like, yes, but you don't even do one, two, three, four. Then you know you are dealing with an unaccountable husband. Even vice versa, you know you are dealing with an, an unaccountable wife because they are finding ways to switch the matter. They're finding ways to switch the matter because they don't want to become accountable. Let me tell you the traits of an accountable husband. An accountable husband, when he's told the truth, he is willing to sit down with his wife and say, honey, I'm going to listen to you. And I want us to challenge that word to see if it will benefit the family. A wife, when you tell her the truth, she's willing to sit down and say, you know what? I appreciate the truth you're speaking. And because this is something I'm not used to, my husband, can you help me to become more efficient in this particular way? But when you are confront them, the Bible says, you know what? Let's go to Titus chapter 2. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. There's something the Lord is showing me there. Oh, help us God. Malakashka kula kishta. Kalabraska kula kishta. Mandre sike. Oh, Father, we bless you. Let's go to the book of Titus, chapter 2. And we're going to learn mighty in that particular area. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. I need to get blessed with an iPad. <laughs> I need to get blessed with an iPad. Look at this. Titus, chapter 2. We're going to read it from verse 3. Verse 3, and, and look at what it says in verse 3 of Titus chapter 2. And it says here, The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false teachers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Verse 4, that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Now notice here, I want to show you something very important here. And, and it's, it's in that verse 4. Do you know that a, a, a younger woman cannot love her husband efficiently and effectively unless she is told, she is taught to love her husband by an older woman that is in God? Do you know there are a lot of women? Let me tell you, let me tell you today properly, men. Let me tell you properly today, men. Before I come to you, men, in reference to the wife, there are women that don't know how to love a man. <laughs> this is a place to say amen. If I don't see any woman say amen, I don't know. Because maybe you have not been taught by an older woman. Let me say this again. Let me say this again. Let's actually read that verse again before I come to the man. The Bible says here. That they may teach, verse 4, the younger woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. A, a, a woman must be taught how to love her child. I hear people every time they come to me, they say, oh yes, uh, there is no love like a mother's love. There is no love like a mother's love towards the children. Do you know that that there is a love that a mother can give to a child that actually cripples the child. The child becomes useless and unproductive in the future. Because there is a love that you think it's love, but it's not love. It's actually crippling the child. So the Bible says that the older woman must teach the younger woman what it means to love a man and what it means to love children. Don't be fooled by these things you are seeing. There are women that don't know how to love children, even though they gave birth to them. There are women that don't know how to love a man, even when they are married to that man. I'm coming to you men now. Because you might be sitting there and say, hey, this guy has given us ammunition. I'm teaching you something very valid here. Go to the older woman. They will teach you what it is to love a man. They will teach you what it is to honor a man. They will teach you what it is to walk with a man. 
They will teach you what it is to submit to a man. They will teach you what it is to raise children. They will teach you what it is to, because older women have seen life more than you. But you think in your own pride, you can just love a man and you can just walk. It doesn't work that way, my beloved. Let me show you something here that's very key. Let's continue here. Verse 5 of Titus chapter 2. It says here, Older women will teach you to be discreet. They will teach you to be chaste, to be keepers of home. You know, you know that word, keepers of home, let, 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 me, let, let me spend time on that word. Keepers of home, it means domestic. You are there, your household is in shambles. Your household can't move forward. And the Bible says that it takes a woman to build a home. And I like the way, you, if you can see, you can see the views are going down. Do you know why? Because some of them that are departing are unaccountable women. I'm coming to the men. I'm coming to the men. So they say, I say, no, now he's, he's dealing with us women. You know, I'll come back later on. Do you know why? Because you can't take accountability. That is why you can't listen even to this stream. That is why you can't even stay in the stream. Because accountability is far from you. I'm telling you today, the word is telling you right now that you must be the keeper of the home. You must know how to rule the maid. You must know how to rule maidens. Do you know that as a woman, there are only four women that were called virtuous in the Bible? Only four. The rest were never called virtuous. Not even Eve was called virtuous. The mother of all living was never called virtuous in the Bible. But Ruth was called virtuous. And Ruth was a working woman. Ruth used to work the fields. Ruth used to take care of Boaz. Matter of fact, she married Boaz. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible even tells us that the Proverbs 31 woman, she was a virtuous woman. She had businesses. She had maids under her. Let me tell you something. Not every woman on the planet is virtuous. Not every man on the planet is a man of valor. Not every man on the planet is a provider. Not every man on the planet is a loving man. Not every man on the planet is born again. Only four women in the whole 66 books of the Bible including the deuteronomical books, which are Psalm 151, the book of Tobit, uh, 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 the, the Maccabees and all those books. There is only one, four women that were na named virtuous in the Bible. The rest, there was no virtuous ability. <laughs> the same is true for men. Some men were so disobedient to the point where God took the kingdom away from them. Look at this. Look at, look at what it says. So let's go back to that verse 5. It says in that verse 5, Older women need to teach younger women to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to their husbands. You cannot learn obedient to your husband without being taught that the word of God may not be blasphemed. There's a statement nowadays, they, they say, fear women. What, what, what's there to fear? What's there to fear? What you need to know is that if you are not taught by an older woman as a woman, you cannot survive in marriage. Matter of fact, the highest divorces on the planet are brought in by women. Let's come to the men now. Let's come to the men. Go to verse 6. And look at verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, to be sound in doctrine. I, I, it, you know, you, you can't be walking around there and, and, and you are sitting down as a man and you are always a drunkard. Six packs of beer in the fridge every day. Saturday, you are gone partying. You are gone grooving and you call yourself a mature man. The Bible says here that you need to be sober-minded. How can you as a woman go out there and marry an unsober-minded man? So the Bible says that young men, you need to be sober. You are, not, you are not fulfilling the character of Christ when you are an unsober person. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the tongue of a king does not touch alcohol. Look at this. Let's go on. So verse 6, let's read it together. It says, Young men likewise, I exhort to be sober-minded. Look at verse 7. It says here, In all things, showing thyself, a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, balanced in other words, sincerity. Verse 8, 
sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may not be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you many men today there's so much evil stuff that can be said about them you know what he doesn't res- he doesn't love the woman he doesn't provide he doesn't do this he doesn't move on he it he, he just doesn't do anything that resembles god and a man that does not take accountability has no true genuine character of christ has no has no genuine influence of the holy spirit in their lives has no genuine attribute that they are a true child of god some of you women that are watching me today you went out and married somebody who is pretending to be a sheep you went out and married a woman who is pretending to be a sheep who can never value the essence of the things of god And I I want to teach more today. Go go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and we're going to read we're going to read verse 17 up until 18. And if you there say amen. Those of you who are watching uh that have just logged in, tell me where you are watching from. God bless you. Pamela, thank you for being online. Ella thank you for being online tell me where you are watching from and if you're there on the scripture say amen and look at what it says in verse 17 therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation a true born again man a true born again woman that is a new creation in Christ Jesus cannot help it but be accountable they cannot help it but walk in being accountable a person who cannot help it but walk in unaccountableness is literally a person who's not a new creation in God. Say amen those of you who are watching. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. So today I'm saying this to you today. Are you going to continue walking in unaccountableness or are you going to be that person that's truthful? You know as a woman that you are not taking care of your house. You are not loving your husband. You are not respecting him. You are not taking care of the kids. Your house is just falling apart. Your home is just falling apart. You know as a man, you are struggling to provide. You are struggling to come to a place where you can love your wife. You are struggling to come to a place where you can walk in the authenticity of what you ought to be as a man. And God is willing to help you. God is willing to walk with you. God is willing to bring you to a place where you can become the man or the woman that God has destined you to be. And you know where it starts? It starts by you as a man being honest to your wife. That woman that keeps blowing up your cell phone with all those messages, wanting you to come to a place where you cheat on your wife. Delete her numbers. Delete her numbers. De- get her out of your phone. you woman that is watching today that that is cheating on your husband delete the numbers of that man get away from him you will give account on the day of judgment that 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 illicit affair that you have got step away from it walk away from it you know you know as i'm sitting down and i'm i'm just hearing the lord saying to me that there is too much cheating in the world today too much cheating cheating by emotions cheating even by the body and i'm all saying to you give account to your husband give account to your wife stop being defensive stop fighting the truth stop walking in a ill manner in your life because god wants to help you to change so i'm going to pray for some people today that are online and you're watching today and i just want you as you are online today 
If you want me to pray for you today, just mention yourself there online and I'm going to start praying for you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, Father, I pray for Cristiano Strini in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you establish, oh God, them in the word of God, that they may walk in the mightiness of accountability. I pray for Gurley in the name of Jesus. I mentioned Nicole to you right now. I establish them in the word of God in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that they may walk in the essence of acknowledging the truth. I pray for Subuisiso right now. I pray for Olivia right now. Oh Lord God, Father, bless them with the ability to walk in accountability in the name of Jesus. I pray for Clifford in the name of Jesus, Clifford, I believe that God is resting right now. The ability to take account in the name of Jesus in your life. Wherever you are watching from, I believe that God through the Holy Spirit is working in your life to help you to grow in the truth and take accountability. May the Holy Spirit take your life right now and begin to usher words of growth and transparency in your name. I pray for for. for Kewania, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you may take account that in the relationship that you are in, that when confrontation takes place, I pray for maturity to take form and shape in your life. Lawrence Pewer, in the name of Jesus, I bring your name to the Lord God Almighty in the throne of grace, that you may be able right now, in the name of Jesus, to grow in the spirit of accountability. Takarani, in the name of Jesus, I bless the word of the Lord. Lord God Almighty right now that may it take form and shape in your life uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I hear the Lord saying that he's blessing your life uh, in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord saying that he's going to grow you. I hear the Lord saying that he's going to work in your life. Uh, I see the spirit of the Lord uh, coming upon you to bless you with the ability to take accountability in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for Lucy right now. I bring your marriage to the Lord God God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, I enter through the blood of Jesus uh, that speaks better things than the blood of bulls, rams, and goats. Uh, I usher in your marriage right now uh, by the power of the Lord God Almighty, by the resurrection power that broke uh, the tomb, uh, the resurrection power that broke the hands of death. Uh, I put them into your marriage, that power into your marriage right now. May your marriage resurrect. Uh, may your marriage strengthen up. Uh, may your marriage be real united in the name of Jesus. I remove every chaff of the devil in the name of Jesus. I seal your marriage by the precious mighty blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. All the marriages of the people that are watching online. Nicole, I pray for your marriage in the name of Jesus. I pray for accountability to rest in your marriage. I pray for restoration to rest in your marriage. I pray for God through the mighty working of the Holy Spirit that he may transform your marriage and set you on a path of greatness. I pray that truth may unfold in your marriage. I pray that truth may unfold upon the mouth of your husband, upon your mouth as well. I pray for transparency to grow. I pray that there be nakedness of speech in the name of Jesus. I pray that where there is cheating, where there is foulness, where there is wrongdoing, in the name of Jesus, I speak restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I bring your husbands that are failing to walk in those marriages to the Lord God Almighty. I bring your wives to the Lord God Almighty that are failing in their marriages that they may walk, oh God, in the mighty word of God in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that the rest, the spirit of forgiveness may rest in the hearts of the husband, may rest in the hearts of the wives, that you may be able to forgive in your life in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for love, son. I pray for you, love, son, in the name of Jesus. By the power invested in the word of God, I pray that the will of God may take form and shape in your life, that you may live in the perfect will of God, wherever your life was disintegrated in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, love, son. Love, son, right now as I was praying for you, I'm seeing the Lord's God saying there is disappointment in your life. And the Lord saying he wants to restore certain things in your life, love son. 
I'm seeing the Lord saying, disappointment has been moving in your life so strong. I know I can't speak to you right now, Lovson, but if, if you are there online, say amen, so that I can reveal further of what the Lord is saying concerning your life, Lovson. The Lord is saying that you are at a place in your life where you face so much disappointment that you are giving up in many areas of your life. And the Lord is saying He wants to restore you. So the Lord is saying, my child, don't stop coming to me. The Lord is saying, I want to restore the areas that you have been disappointed in. Love son, if this is you that I'm speaking today to you, the Lord is saying he's restoring areas of your life. You've been disappointed so much in your life that there are some areas of your life that you have chosen to give up. And the, and the Lord is saying, don't give up, my daughter. The God is saying now he is strengthening you with might. Love, son, as I speak to you right now, the Lord is saying he's strengthening you with might. Don't give up, love, son. Don't give up. This is what the Lord is saying to you. Leah, right now in the name of Jesus. Leah, I'm speaking in your life right now. Leah, never stop praying. I'm seeing a person who's holding their hands and they're looking down and they're not speaking anything. Leah, go back to the spirit of prayer. Leah, start praying. If I'm speaking to you, Leah, I saw your name here and the Lord just said this word to you. Leah Ateng, the Lord is saying, do not stop praying. The Lord is saying, continue walking in the spirit of prayer. The Lord is saying, I want to do some wonderful stuff in your life. But if you give up praying, I will not be able to have that authority to do stuff in your life. So Leah, start walking strongly in the spirit of prayer in the name of Jesus. And I'm hearing the Lord saying he's going to be bringing dreams your way. That's what I'm hearing the Lord saying. If you are a dreamer, Leah, please tell me online right now if you are a dreamer. The Lord is saying he's going to be bringing dreams your way. Some of them, you, the, the Lord is even saying there are some that you've been struggling to interpret. There are some that you've been struggling to interpret. Leah, if I'm talking to you, I would like you to connect with us because I want to speak to you even tomorrow after the stream because the Lord is, is putting a ministry of a dreamer in your life. The Lord is putting a ministry of a dreamer in your life. So, so that, that ministry, I want to just take your hand and tell you what the Lord is doing in your life. If you are there, Leah, say amen in the name of Jesus. That's right. It's true. I am a dreamer. So the Lord is telling me the word of God right now. The Lord wants to take you to a realm where you are going to see more. Not only just the relationships that are around you, the Lord wants to make you a dreamer in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God. Leah, listen to me carefully. The Lord wants to make you a dreamer in the kingdom of God. I'm seeing a Daniel anointing coming upon you. I'm seeing a Daniel anointing moving in your life. So Leah, please, that's, let's just say I am a dreamer. Yes, definitely reach out to us because I want to speak some few extra stuff in your life that God is showing me today concerning your life. Now listen to me. I didn't expect to go in the prophetic today, but if you want me to speak upon your life today, Go ahead and type amen and God, I'm sure, he will release a word concerning your life. Listen to me carefully. While I'm busy in this area, listen to me carefully. The church of Elyon Christian Church is located at Unit 8A and B at Zelda Park in Pretoria North at number 570 Harit Meritz. I want to see you this Sunday. I want to speak a word over your life this Sunday. I want to get into the crevices of your life this way. I want to locate your life in the realm of the spirit and begin to delve in areas the Lord wants us to delve in. in. So I want to see you this Sunday at the church. The service starts at 9 a.m. Number 570 Merit Street in the name of Jesus. Um, I, I believe the Lord is working a wonderful work right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hear the Lord saying, those of you who don't have a church to go to, the Lord is saying, come this Sunday. Those of you who have been sending us messages and saying, you know what, Pastor Rick, we want to give into this church. We want to empower this church. 
we are in the United States, we are in the UK, we are in this particular area, you are more than welcome to give as they flight the details to you. But I want to continue ministering to, to people right now in the name of Jesus. Let me start with Milka in the name of Jesus. Milka, if you are there, say amen. Milka, if you are there, say amen. Malakashka, kulakista, kalabrashka, mandre sike, roto, kaba. Serabiete rababashike mondere sike rababashike mondere sike rababashike mondere sike i papra rababashike mondere sike Milka if you are there I've got a word for you from the Lord Milka if you are there I've got a word for you from the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Milka if you are there say amen and I want to speak a word of God over your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Milka, if you are there, say amen. And we want to get this word to you. If you have lost network, reach unto us in the numbers that are given so that we can be able to minister to your life on the word that I just saw in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. We give you praise and honor, worship and adoration in the name of Jesus. Malakashka kula kishta kalabrashka mandre sike roto kaba serabiete rababashike mondere sike rababashike. Milka, listen to me. I'm seeing a person that wants to grow mightily in the Lord, but I'm seeing a person that has been pulled back by so many challenges in life. I'm seeing a fence that is standing between you. And the Lord is saying, I want to break this fence. And I want you to walk and step in the area of your grace and your power. And what the Lord is saying is that he wants to remove the shackles. Now tell me, uh, uh, Milka, I'm speaking to you now. The Lord is saying there are areas where you want to push on in life, but it feels like you are hitting a brick wall. If that is you, Milka, say amen. Say amen. It, it's like you're hitting a brick wall. And the Lord is saying, I want to break that brick wall. He's saying, I want to get you to the area that you're supposed to be in. The Lord wants to move you to new dimensions, but he can't because there's a brick wall that is standing, that is standing in front of you. So Milka, the Lord is saying, take this word and wage a warfare. The Bible says that wage a warfare with the prophecies that have been given concerning your life. Wage a warfare because God wants to use the ministry of intercession to break you into new grounds. Now that's the word for you, Milka. May God bless you as you hear this word or come back to the stream and hear the word of the Lord God Almighty in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me carefully. I know some of you women are literally sitting at a place where you don't know what to do anymore in your life. I know you are sitting at a place where you don't know how to go about your husband. And the Lord is saying to all the women that are watching online, the Lord is saying, go and start dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. The Lord is saying, start becoming a prayerful woman. Stop getting counsel from wrong places. The Lord is saying, I want to give you counsel. But the Lord is saying, become a person of prayer. Woman, I'm talking to you today. You are struggling to get that man right. You are struggling to walk with that man. You are struggling to penetrate through to your husband. You are struggling to get him to be what he is as God is showing you. But God is saying, I'm going to give you counsel. Come to the secret place of the Most High. Let's go to that verse that the Lord has given for the woman. Psalm 90. In the name of Jesus. Go there with me. This is a word to the woman. This is a word to the woman. Psalm 90. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe the Lord God Almighty that somebody is going to bless me with an iPad so that I can stop paging on this in the name of Jesus. And this is what it says in Psalm 90. Go there to Psalm 90. And it says here, Lord, verse 1, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Listen to that. So, so, so the Bible says in verse 2, 
before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. I want you to, to know this as woman. I want you to sit down as woman. I want you to know that God wants you. He says here, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. The Lord wants you to dwell in him as a woman. The Lord wants you to dwell in him as a woman. Now look at this verse. Now go to Psalm 91 verse 1. God wants, to, God wants to dwell in your midst. He wants to dwell in your midst. He wants to guide you, woman. Psalm 91 verse 1. Listen to what it says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. God is calling woman to that secret place. Stop avoiding praying. Stop avoiding studying the word. Stop running around with that. And I'm talking to dating women as well. Stop running around with men that don't love you. Stop running around with men that don't love you. Listen to me, men. Stop running around with that woman that doesn't love you. And the Bible says a woman that is holy and pure, she's obtained in the Lord. Listen to me, young man. You want to get married. Sought for a wife in the Lord. Don't run around in the world. There are dangerous women out there. There are strange women out there. Men, listen to me now. Especially if you're not married and you're looking to marry. Obtain your wife in the Lord. Because people who are in God take accountability. They are not defensive. They don't fight. They don't do reverse psychology. They take accountability. So today, I hope you were blessed. And those of you that I see have given online may god richly bless you because this really empowers our ministry those of you who gave on paper may god richly bless you for those of you who gave on paper for those of you who gave to the fnb details of the bank may god richly bless you you know for us to raise this ministry your finances have helped us to have what we have today i know there are people who want breakthroughs but don't want to impact the ministry May God bless you with your breakthrough. But those of you who want to empower our ministry, who want to walk with us, who want to touch the world with us, don't hesitate to give into this ministry so that we can continue being a blessing to many, many more people out there because your, your giving helps us to empower people. And listen to me. We are launching a book in June. We're going to do a mighty, fabulous event. And in June, I'm going to show you the picture of the book. If you see the book, it's going to be called Marriage Decoded. 17, sorry, 18 powerful chapters on how to restore, build, and how to actually find a spouse in your life. How to deal with in-laws. And this book is going to be readily available through an event in, in June. And we are going, only going to be giving 200 seats, 200 seats of people that want to be part of this event. And we're going to make sure that we build together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being part of this particular session. Thank you for walking with us. And I believe that God is going to do a mighty and powerful thing in your life. Be blessed. Be empowered and share this stream with somebody who wants to listen to it afterwards in the name of Jesus.